Shalom, Most High Christ blessed. I'm Officer Asa of Israel United of Christ Chicago. All right, we back with part two. If you've been following, first class was entitled what? Foul and Unclean Spirits, part one, sodomy. What well, we touched on, sodomy it has a foul and unclean spirit. So now we back again. Foul and Unclean Spirits, part two, bestiality, all right? We talking about bestiality, all right? We're going to start off with the definition of bestiality. Because what is it? You might hear that, and you might wonder, is that even in the Bible? We're going to see tonight. Read that definition, please. Bestiality. Number one, sexual relations between a human being and a lower animal. So it says sexual relations between a human being and a lower animal, a animal, period. That's what it is. Sexual relations between a human being and an animal. That's what that's talking about. So let's go to the Bible now. Now you probably wonder why this topic is disgusting. I'm here just reading the, the definition. I'm disgusted already. Guess what? Our people deal with that, believe it or not. And let's see if it's in the scriptures. Go to Leviticus chapter 18, verse 23. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 23. The book of Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 23. Uh-huh. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therein. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. Uh-huh. Read on. 24, defile not yourselves in any of these things. For in all these, the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. Let's read it again from the top. Verse 23. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therein. When you lie with a beast, with a animal, you defile yourself. Brothers and sisters, you defile yourself when you do that. Read on. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. What did God call that? It is confusion. That's confusion. If you have an affinity for an animal, a uh, proclivity for animals, that is confusion. Thus saith the Lord. So this is the law against bestiality. That's what you're reading. If you are doing that, you are in the midst of sin. If that is a thought, a urge, a desire you have, we are telling you today, here, now, that is sin. Read on. Defile not yourselves in any of these things. What you got to understand, this would not be written in Leviticus 18 if our people were not participating in those things. Remember, when you read verse 1, he said, all the doings of Egypt and those round about it shall ye not do. Leviticus 18 is all the unlawful sexual acts. It ain't in the Bible for no reason. Understand that. Our people deal with this. Because a lot of times we be like, oh, that's that's the white man. That's the nah. Our people deal with this stuff. Some brothers and sisters, you may deal with this thing. It's a foul and unclean spirit. That's what we're showing you tonight. This is the law. So we're touching on the law right now. Bestiality is a sin. Uh, read on. Verse 24. Did we finish that up? No, sir. Defile not yourselves in any of these things. Uh-huh. For in all these, the nations are defiled, which I cast out before, the, before you. So the nations around us took part in vile acts like this. That's why they got all these crazy rituals that they be into. The other nations did that stuff. We not supposed to partake in stuff like that. We're a holy people chosen by God. So we telling you tonight, if you are in the midst of that, if that's a desire that you got in you, that is sin and it's a foul and unclean spirit. From there, give me Leviticus chapter 20, verse 15. Right now we touching the law. We showing you that that goes against God's laws. That's what we showing you. Just like we did on the previous part one about sodomy. 
Read. The book of Leviticus, chapter 20, and verse 15. Uh-huh. And if a man lie with the beast, he shall surely be put to death, and ye shall slay the beast. And if a woman approach into any beast and lie down there too, thou shalt kill the woman and the beast. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Read it again from the top. If a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death. So you see that? This sin here, right? Under Moses, you had to die for committing bestiality. There was no sacrifice for that sin. Read on. And ye shall slay the beast. So not only did the man that laid down with the beast have to die, you had to kill the beast. One no trying to rectify that. That that the man and the animal, they got to go. Read. Verse 16. And if a woman approach into any beast and lie down there too, thou shalt kill the woman uh -huh. and the beast. One thing you're gonna understand as we go through this series, ain't no sins gender specific or uh, gender specific. Excuse me, gender specific. Because a lot of times we be like, oh, well, that, that's just men that be. No, no, no. You going to see tonight women be in the midst of this stuff too. That's what you going to see. Read on. They shall surely be put to death. Same thing with the woman. The woman that lay with the animal, she got to be put to death under Moses. And that animal got to be put to death because there was no sacrifice for it. You couldn't atone for that. Read. Their blood shall be upon them. That's how you know right there. It said their blood shall be upon them. Just like with sodomy. Under Moses, you had to die. Now under Christ, you can repent. But you will not get into the kingdom of heaven if you do not stop that behavior, if you are in the midst of it. From there, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 21. Right now, we're showing you it's a sin. That's what we're showing you right now. Bestiality is a sin, thus saith the Lord. It goes against God's commandments. Deuteronomy 27 and verse 21. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse 21. Read. Cursed be he that lieth with any manner of beast, and all the people shall say, Amen. Read it again from the top. Cursed be he that lieth with any manner of beast, and all the people shall say, Amen. So this is us agreeing to the covenant of the Most High. We agree. If we go against anything the Lord said in this covenant, in these laws, we accepted the punishment that came with it. So if you lay with a beast, you was cursed. Meaning what? Death under Moses. Read it again. Cursed be he that lieth with, with any manner of beast. Uh -huh. And all the people shall say, Amen. So concerning this foul and unclean spirit, you was cursed if you was in the midst of this. Death. Ecclesiastes 7 and 29. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 29. That is a sin, brothers and sisters. We trying to beat it into your brain. That is a foul and unclean spirit. Ecclesiastes 7, 29. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 29. Uh-huh. Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Read it again. Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright. So wait, it said God made man upright. God did not make you to be involved in the behavior that some of you are involved in, that some of us was involved in. God didn't make us to be murderers, killers, drug dealers, whores, whoremongers. He didn't make us to be that way. But what happened? But they have sought out many inventions. Man looked for these things. Man brought about these things. God didn't tell you to go do that. Right now, we're talking about bestiality. God didn't put that in your mind to go do that. That's something that was in you. That's something that you decided to entertain. From there, give me Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19. Because you got to understand something. You're not getting the kingdom of heaven if you don't leave that behavior alone. 
That's what we're showing you through this series. These are foul and unclean spirits, and these things will stop you from getting to the kingdom of heaven. The book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 19. Read. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, uh -huh. which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness. Whoa. It said uncleanness. Bestiality is uncleanness. Not only is it uncleanness, bestiality fall under adultery, uncleanness. You know why? That's, that's sex outside of the union of marriage, outside of the laws of marriage. Sex is between a man and a woman, nothing else. You doing anything outside of that, that sin that goes against God. Read. Lasciviousness. Uh-huh. Idolatry. Hold on. Lasciviousness. Bestiality. Lasciviousness is evil sexual desire. You got a desire for animals. That's lasciviousness. Read on. Idolatry. Hold With on. Stop. We just wanted 19. Jump down to verse 21. We getting to the point. Verse 21. Envyings, uh -huh. murders, drunkenness, uh -huh. revelings, uh -huh. and such like. All these things Paul just listed right here will do what? Read. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in the, in the time past, uh -huh. that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you participate in these things. Because they might say, well, I don't do that. If you support these things, you will not get into the kingdom of heaven. That is thus saith the Lord. From there, get Ephesians 5 and verse 3. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 3. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 3. Uh-huh. But fornication and all uncleanness uh -huh. or covetousness. Fornication and all uncleanness. Read. Let it not be named, not a, let it, no, my bad. Let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. These things, this uncleanness, what we talking about tonight, bestiality, that should not be named amongst the children of Israel. Verse 5 now, jump down to verse 5. Verse 5. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, uh -huh. nor unclean person, no, nor unclean person, you're in the midst of bestiality. That's what you dabbling in. You're an unclean person, thus saith the Lord. You better leave that alone. That's making you unclean. You're defiling yourself. Read. Nor covetous man, uh -huh. who is an idolater, uh -huh. have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and you, of God. You will not get the kingdom of God. And notice, every time Paul talk about this stuff, he says idolatry. Why? That will become your God. It will become more important to fulfill that lust than to serve God. So you must rule the flesh. The flesh should not be ruling you. From there, get 1 John 3 and 4. 1 John 3 and verse 4. Let's get that Wikipedia of zoophilia. Zoophilia. Let's get that Wikipedia of zoophilia. The book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Read. Whosoever committed sin transgressive also the law because you might be watching right now you like well what's sin? how you what's saying we showing you the law god's laws is telling you bestiality is a sin so now we really honing in on what sin is sin is when you transgress god's laws transgress means to break go against oppose so when you in the midst of bestiality you are going against god's rules read for sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the breaking, the going against, the opposing of God's laws. So if you are in the midst of that, you're going against God when you do that. From there. Now, let's read. We ain't going to read that zoophilia just yet. 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Then we're going to go into that zoophilia. We're going to read that next. Uh, get the history pulled up on that Wikipedia. Get that history pulled up so we already have it ready. Scroll down, get that history. It should say history. Yep, right there. Perfect. First Corinthians 3, verse 16. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 3, and verse 16. Uh-huh. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. So your body is God's temple. 
if you it said the spirit of God dwells in our bodies, our bodies is God's temple. Then it said, if any man defile God's temple, you're defiling that body that God gave you when you participate with bestiality. And some of y'all may be like, well, damn, who would do that? You'd be surprised what's bestiality. Some of y'all doing this. You dog lovers. You dog breeders. We're going to get to y'all in a minute. Verse 17, read it again. Verse 17, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. If you defile this temple, if you ruin this temple, what will God do? Him shall God destroy. Him shall God destroy. It's just like the buildings you see in Chicago. They remain uninhabited for too long. What does the city do? They knock it down. That is what God is going to do to you if you defile that temple, if you continue to defile that temple. Now, let's read. Zoophilia. Let's read this Wikipedia on zoophilia. You're probably like, what the hell is that? Zoophilia. Let's read that. History. We read that small couple of sentences under history. Zoophilia. History. The historical perspective on zoophilia and bestiality varies greatly. From the prehistoric era, where depictions of bestiality appear in European rock art. And well, in European rock art. The white man. It said European rock art. Who's in Europe? The white man. In European rock art, bestiality was carved and engraved in the artwork. Keep reading. To the Middle Ages. Uh-huh. Where bestiality was met with execution. But it, wait, it said, but bestiality was met with execution. Meaning what? If you was caught doing that, death. Read. In many parts of the world, bestiality is illegal under animal abuse laws uh -huh. or laws dealing with sodomy or crimes against nature. That's in other parts of the world. They know that that behavior is against nature. That's not the natural use of a man or a woman to deal with an animal. Drop that. Let's go to video one let's go to video one very short video let's go visuals are good are you t tired of dating men well instead you can date and marry your dog oh you didn't know about this well let me enlighten you elizabeth hode was a supermodel when she was younger now she's in her 50s and apparently has dated more than 200 men that's a lot of men and she still couldn't find one man that she gelled with so she decided to instead marry her dog on live tv there was even an ordained minister presence now in case you find what she did empowering let me tell you there's nothing empowering about marrying a friggin animal Clout is a hell of a drug, and this whole thing screams publicity stunt to me. Why the hell would you go on TV to marry your dog? The only thing I can think of is she's doing it for the clout. She could have done all this privately, but she didn't. And if you've dated more than 200 men and you're still struggling to find one to settle down with? I don't know, just maybe... Maybe the problem is you! Okay, y'all might find that funny. Y'all might find it hilarious. And you might say, well, man, she probably is... Uh doing it for cloud or trying to be funny or do, or do a stunt. No, the heathens actually deal like that. That's why we started off in the law in Leviticus. The Lord said the nations round about you do things like that. Even when you see these Edomites with their dogs, they kissing their dog in the mouth. Let's get more. But remember what I said at the beginning. We think that it's just the heathen that's involved in these things. Oh, no, 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 no. You're going to learn tonight. Next video. Eighteen-year-old Mangli Munda has just got married, but she's already worried her new husband might stray, and with good reason. He's a dog. Name is Adisa Kushnaim. Mangli's parents ordered the rushed wedding on the advice of holy men, who said their daughter was cursed. I have a dog because the people of the village believe that 
ऐसा सोचते हैं कि मुझ में जो दोस्त है वो कुत्ते से शादी करने से वो उस पर चला जाएगा और फिर इसके बाद जिससे मेरी शादी होगी उसकी उम्र भी लंबी होगी ऐसा मेरे गांव के लोग कहते हैं कि बाकी भी मेरी तरह लड़कियां हैं जिन्होंने इस रिवाज को माना है उनके ऊपर से ये दोष हट चुका है और वो अभी खुशहाल that that is just the heathens no our people deal with this our people are involved in these type of things have these type of thoughts or uh what's the the political correct word proclivities it ain't just the heathen again it wouldn't be in leviticus if our people didn't deal with that now where does that bestiality spirit begin matthew chapter 5 verse 27 Probably like, why the hell? Matthew 5, 27, that, that be for the, the brothers. They be trying to make a covenant with their eyes. It's going to line up in a minute. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 27. Where does it begin? We First, we talked about bestiality being a sin. Now we finna see where does that spirit begin? Read. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, uh -huh. thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh-huh. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with, with her already in his heart. So why am I reading that? That spirit of bestiality begins with pornography. I'm going to say it again. That spirit of bestiality, brothers or sisters, yes, yeah, sisters, again, sin ain't gender specific. I can't say it enough. Stop thinking it's just a man that deal with that stuff. No, 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 no. Women deal with that stuff too. That spirit builds up or comes from what? Pornography. You on them little sites and you searching all this stuff and then you come across something that's out of the ordinary. And then what? You open yourself up to more spirits. Is that uh, verse 28? Yes, sir. Read Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. So you started off watching pornography. That is how you ended up with that spirit. Or even wondering, having vile, unclean thoughts in your mind about an animal. That's where it started from. Because we see Elam and they crazy ritual. You saw the white celebrity woman went on some talk show and, and married a dog and all this. You laugh at that, and then you say, well, that, that's Elam. That's the East Indians. They, they weird. They crazy like that. But meanwhile, you looking at videos that if somebody caught you behind, you'd be ashamed. Proverbs 23, 7. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, and verse 7. Uh-huh. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh-huh. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So it said, wherever a man think, that's what he's going to be, right? That's what we just read in Proverbs 23 and 7. So if bestiality is on your mind, eventually it's going to manifest. Eventually, you're going to act out the thought. That's why Bishop Yahweh I'll be bringing out that quote. Watch your thoughts for they become actions. So if your thought is what we see on these videos, it's going to become your action from there. Get Sirach 23, verse 1. Sirach chapter 23 and verse 1. The book of Sirach chapter 23 and verse 1. Read. O Lord, Father and Governor uh -huh. of all my whole life, lead me not to their counsels and let me not fall by them. Who will set scourges over my thoughts and the discipline of wisdom over my heart? You need scourges over your thoughts so you don't act out what's in your mind. Read. That they spare me not from my ignorances, uh -huh. and it pass not by my sins. Verse 3. Least my ignorances increase. You know what just happened? One and two was the thoughts. Verse 3, they then became action. Read. Least my ignorances increase, and my sins abound to my destruction. Uh -huh. And I fall before mine adversaries, and my enemy rejoice over me. And my enemy rejoice over me. How embarrassed would you be, brother or sister, somebody found out you was messing with an animal? 
or got videotape of you, picture of you, you'll be shamed, embarrassed. That's why Sirach say, don't go after your lust. At least it brings shame upon you from there. Get 2nd Ezra 16, verse 67. 2nd Ezra 16, verse 67. If that's in you, you better tame that thing or it's going to make you a laughing stock. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 16, what verse? Verse 67. And verse 67. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Uh -huh. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities. Uh -huh. To meddle no more with them forever. You meddle or dabble with that spirit when y'all watch that pornography. That's how you dabble with it. That's how you meddle with it. Read on. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. You want to be delivered. You have to leave off from sin. You must leave that sin alone. You must cast it from you. Stop meddling with it. Stop dabbling with it. Stop trying to find ways to scratch that itch. You know what your shortcoming is. So why would you feed it with pornography? Because that's what it comes from. Mark 7 and 21. The book of Mark, chapter 7 and verse 21. Uh-huh. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So it said, from out of the heart of man. Christ telling you where the sins come from. Read. Adulteries. And the heart is your mind. That's where it come from. Wicked thoughts in your mind. Read. Fornication. Uh-huh. Murders. Uh-huh. Thefts. Uh-huh. Covetousness. Uh-huh. Wickedness. Uh-huh. Deceit. Mm -hmm. Lasciviousness. What? And lasciviousness. What? Lasciviousness. Bestiality falls under that. That's an evil sexual desire. Read. An evil eye. Uh-huh. Blasphemy. Read. Pride. Foolishness. All these things come from within. It was a thought. Now what happened? All these things come from within and defile the man. That's why you must rule your mind, brothers and sisters, before those thoughts become actions. This is some of your shortcomings. This is some of your chink in your armor. Write these scriptures down. Take it in. If you give in to this thought, it will manifest. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 14. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 12, and verse 14. Uh-huh. How be it, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. So just say you give in to this, and you pose to be uh, Miss Holy or Mr. Righteous, and then somebody find out you in the midst of this stuff. You giving them occasion. You giving the people that hate the truth occasion to blaspheme. That's why you got to stay on point. That's why you got to battle and conquer yourself. You supposed to be the example of righteousness. But when you give in, you entertain your lust. Now you giving them ammunition to speak against this truth. So you must rule over your spirit from there. From there, from there, from there, from there. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 9. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. It says they that will be rich fall into temptations and snares. Why? Right. A lot of times the most high will stop you from making a certain amount of money because when you got a certain amount of money, you get to entertain lust that you wouldn't be able to entertain when you was poor and when you was broke. That's why when you look at celebrities, you see the woman, she decides she's going to marry a dog. She's probably fulfilled all fantasies and lust because of the money she got. So then that don't, that don't give her a rush no more. Now she want to do something that's out of the ordinary. And the list goes on with all them entertainers. You're like, damn, why is he messing with children now? Why is she dealing with animals? Why are they going to, to wild parties where they dressing up and switching roles and all this? Because they that be rich fall into 
deceitful and hurtful lust. That's why the Lord stopped you from getting a certain amount of money a lot of times. You wonder why you never went rich. You never got a billion dollars because you'll probably be like these people. From there, get to Rock 33 and 27. The Most High be having a, a method to what he be doing. He know if he let you get a certain amount of money, you're going to end up like these people. Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 33 and verse 27. Uh-huh. Send him to labor that he be not idle. That he be not what? For he be not idle. That you be not idle. So these people, they rich, and then they got so much idle time. They get to entertain all manner of evil in their mind. That's why the Lord don't let you get there. Damn, why I can't never get rich? Why I can't never hit the lottery? He know what you, he know you more than you know yourself. If you had the money and the access, you would do some of the same vile and unclean things. From there, get video three. We're going to hit three and four. They short. Video three and four. So us being busy is a safety. You need to stay busy because when you're not busy, what happens? You end up on them porn sites. Now, we going to see, is it only heathens that do this? That, that have this proclivity or this wickedness in their mind? Let's see. Press play. We begin with a Milwaukee man accused of a troubling crime. 58-year-old Jose Mora is accused of sexually assaulting a neighbor's dog. Stop! As Colleen Henry... Jose Mora. That's one of our people. Again, we think we... Oh, no, no, not us. Surely not us, not us, no. No, no, that's, that's the white folks. That's, that's the Chinese, that's the Arabs. You see, our people deal with this too. How do you even have the mind to even deal with an animal? From what? Pornography. Pornography. Leave that porn alone, brothers and sisters. Why he saying sisters? We gonna see why. Press play. We finna drop it in a minute. Press play. Reports new at 10, the dog's family wants him forced to register as a sex offender, though the law does not require it. Last winter, Maribel Murillo's family installed a surveillance camera in the garage after someone stole her dad's tools. She never expected what she saw on the monitor that day last March. My mom was in the kitchen and I called her and I said, Mom, look. And she said, oh my God. And at this point, I seen Diego's front paws scratching at the door and trying to get away from him, and Jose had his back legs to his hips, and he was raping my dog. Maria ran for her 11-month-old puppy, Diego, while her mom kept her eyes on the monitor. She said he pushed him off, and um, he turned towards the cameras. They didn't know the camera was there, zipped up his pants, and act like if he was going to wash his hands. Maria says she confronted her next-door neighbor, Jose Mora. And I said, I seen what you did, and he, and he laughed at me. He, he, he had a huge smile, and he laughed at me, and he said there was no way I could have seen what he done. Murillo called police. According to court records, Mora eventually admitted engaging in sex acts with Diego, adding, quote, he may be capable of doing other inappropriate or harmful things sexually, given he acted out his thoughts with the dog, Diego. Stop. We can drop it. Why we go there? It's not just heathens. We think it's just the heathens. No, our people deal in that spirit. That's why we need to know the scriptures on it. Understand that it's sin because somebody deal with that. If he broke into their house and did that to the dog, surely women is not off limits. Children is not off limits. This is what can happen to the sister, you brothers and sisters that's dealing in that porn. Leave it alone. From there, we have another video again. We think it's not our people. Surely it's not our people. Let's see. Turn out to an update on the South Florida veterinarian accused of possessing child pornography and sexually stop, abusing stop, animals. Stop, 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 stop. The class is on bestiality. But I didn't point out tonight porn being one of them things that leads brothers and sisters to this spirit but what else what else did you hear this next man we're gonna see it said he had access 
or in his possession, he had child pornography. He had child porn in his possession. And what did he end up doing? Press play. Using animals. 40-year-old Prentice Madden pleaded guilty today to those federal charges, admitting to making several videos of himself having sex with dogs and sharing them on social media. He's the former medical director at Caring Hands Animal Hospital in Aventura, but was fired after the federal charges came to light in March. And since then, he's been held without bond uh, at the Miami Federal Detention Center. Madden will be sentenced in October. We turn okay, to drop it. Remember what it said at the beginning. He had in his possession child pornography. Porn is different genres of that evil substance, because that's what it is. A lot of people you ask them is they watching that stuff and they say they watching uh, the regular uh, videos. No, they don't. He had access to child pornography and then he ended up abusing all them dogs he posed to be a veterinarian he up to having sexual contact with the dogs where did it start from pornography telling y'all leave that porn alone or another spirit will come on you matthew 12 and 43 you keep playing with that porn brothers and sisters we got that other video okay we got that other video brothers and sisters leave that stuff alone you don't leave it alone. You're opening yourself up to more demons. Read that, Matthew 12 and 43. The book of Matthew chapter 12 and verse 43. Uh-huh. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. So you came in. That unclean spirit left you. You started learning God's laws, applying God's laws. But y'all meddle with the pornography. You dabble in the spirit when you sneak and watch these videos you're supposed to be watching. Read. He walketh through dry places. So that spirit is searching, looking for another home, looking for another body to inhabit. He's going to come back to where he left. I'm going to let Christ say it. Read. He walketh through dry places, uh -huh. seeking rest, and findeth none. When he can't find another body to get inside of, what does the demon say to himself? Read. Then he says, I will return into my house. From whence I came out. The demon says, I left that brother. I left that sister. Let me see if I can come back into the house I once lived in. Read. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. So Christ giving you an analogy. The Holy Ghost ain't in there. Why the Holy Ghost ain't in there? You ain't fasting. You ain't praying. You ain't studying. You not building up that fortress around your mind. So that demon says, huh. I can come back to this house. Ain't no furniture in here. I'm coming back up in there. Read. Then goeth he and taketh with him, will take it with him himself, seven other spirits more wicked than himself. So the demon you had prior come back and he brings seven more wicked demons. Now you worse than you was before you repented. Why? You ain't got the Holy Ghost in there. The, the most high and his son, you ain't letting them abide with you. They not in your spirit. They not in your soul. You entertaining this pornography. Now you wondering why you having all these wicked thoughts. From there, get Proverbs 12 and 26. Then we're going to go to another video. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12 and verse 26. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. So it said the righteous, which is you brothers and sisters that keep the commandments, are more excellent than those that do not. But it says the way of the wicked will seduce you. Pornography will seduce you. Pornography will have you like this next video. These videos that we're looking over tonight, it will have you wicked it will corrupt your good manners first corinthians 15 33 it will corrupt you if you entertain wickedness long enough it will corrupt you you can't meddle you can't dabble in these things you can't well let me just take a little glimpse you know yourself better than anybody else you know what you weak to so why set yourself up for failure first corinthians 15 33 
the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. What's that evil communication that you secretly communicating with? Pornography. One of the men we just watched, that was Jake. That was our people. What did it say they found in his possession? Porn. Child porn. And then they call him messing with dogs later on. Read. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. If you feed your soul with righteousness, you're going to be more righteous. If you feed your soul with wickedness, you're going to become more wicked. Understand that. Video five now. Video five. So what we talk about before we play it, what we talk about, bestiality is a sin. Then what do we talk about? Then what do we talk about? How did it begin? How does that spirit begin? How does it grow in a person? Pornography. Play video. Let's play this video. An upstate woman faces buggery charges after sheriff's deputies say she videotaped herself having sex with a dog. Stop! Cherokee County. We think it's just men. You think it's just men that deal with this stuff. It's sisters that deal with it too. It's sisters that deal with it too. It's women that deal with it too. These demons ain't gender specific. Keep telling you that. Get it out your head. The same demons that be on men be on women too. She videotapes herself dealing with a dog. From there, get video six. Get video six. Now, you may say to yourself, wait a minute. Ain't nobody doing that. So you dog lovers out there. This is for you dog lovers. This is like part two for you dog lovers. Play video. Because you may say, well, it's bestiality when, uh, yeah, yeah, that's bestiality. You you going to go snatch somebody, dog, break in, mess with the dog. We're going to show you how you in the midst of that too, dog lovers. Play video. So this is going to be my wife's first time um, collecting from a stud dog. Figured we'd show you guys how to do it um, for a first timer. So these can either go perfect or terribly wrong. Stay tuned and, and find out. Let's move up. We don't need to see no intro. We're going to get to the, the point. Stud now um, and, and see how that goes. So we got my wife. Surprisingly, she has never collected from one of the studs. I've always been around to collect for um, the studs. So I'm going to show her how to do it. And um, in turn, the, the, the logic is, since it's her first time, anything that she comes across, you guys may come across. So it's like, I'm showing her for the first time, but for those that have never collected from their stud dogs, you guys can learn for the first time. I already confused myself, but yeah, it's, we're, just, we're teaching her and hopefully you guys can learn as well. All right, so we got crossbones here. Uh, we got a breeding that we got to do. So we have our cups right here, right? Two cups, and we're all wearing gloves because nobody wants to do this bare hand. That's nasty. So anyway, so we got two cups here. Um, so one cup is for when we first initially collect um, because you want the cloudy stuff, and then the second cup is for... The second cup is just to make sure that it's continuously cloudy because once it turns clear, there's no semen in it. It does no good. It actually harms when it comes to shipping out the semen. Um, it's actually bad for it. So we just want the semen, nothing else. Some people will collect like 10 cc's and only two cc's was actually semen. So anyway, we're gonna get started. So first, what you need to do, have your stud dog and have the two cups. We have two cups here. And- um, Put on gonna... some R&B, Charlie Wilson. Oh <laughs> Stop. Stop. You see how they making jokes? So y'all probably like, okay, he talking about collect. You probably still lost. They finna arouse the dog and jerk the dog, make the dog spill seed so they can produce puppies. That's just what that's what this about. That's why I said you dog lovers. That's bestiality. I don't care how you cut it, how you slice it, how you try to justify it. They making jokes. They giggling. That's bestiality. Listen to what he say. Press play and then we gonna drop it. <laughs> 
Because some of y'all might be eating. I don't want to mess up your appetite while you watch your class. This is disgusting. Press play. I want you to hear what he say. Oh <laughs> anyway, so um, what you're going to do is we have him on his on side like this. And now what you're going to go ahead and do, and I'm going to narrate as she does it, is um, I have him held like this, but you're going to grab him by, um, it's easiest to grab him from behind. And you're, what you're going to do is you're going to grab his, you know, his penis, and you're going to jerk it forward. All right, stop. Knot, right? Stop. There's a... He's giving tutorial like this just regular. I'm not a, a dog breeder, but last time I checked, you get the male dog, you get the female dog, you could drop it. This is disgusting. If you brothers and sisters want puppies that bad, something wrong with you. You supposed to get the male and the female, let them go in the yard and let them do their thing. It's, it's either, because I know the male, he got to show his his uh his dominance or something like that. Because the woman, the, the, the female dog, got to allow him, you know what I'm saying, to do his thing. But you ain't supposed to be up here initiating it your damn self, touching the dog private part. That's bestiality. And he narrating it like it's some regular. No, you're in the midst of bestiality. That's sin. And then the wife laughing and giggling about it. Press play. This the next video. You think it's just men. No. Just to make sure it's a, it's a clear shot. Cause Look sometimes at there's, You could drop it. Away, like you could or... drop it. Stop. That's a female dog. That's a female dog. She's sticking her finger in the female dog vagina. Why? For puppies. So it's a, it's a whole multitude of spirits in there. You covetous because I do know puppies be like three, four hundred dollars a puppy. So you covetous and it's bestiality. So drop that. That was video six and seven. Uh, get Revelation 21 and 8. So you got to examine yourself and repent. So that's what we finna talk about. So we showed you in the law, bestiality is a sin. We showed you where it comes from. It comes from pornography. Because I had an article that showed how porn, it affect your mind. But I didn't get it. Porn affect your mind. It does something to you when you constantly watching porn. So... Let's get Revelation 21 and 8. The book of Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. Read. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable. And the what? And the abominable. If you dealing with animals, if you got a desire, uh, you dog lovers, you dog lovers, that's abominable what you doing. You won't let the dogs mate on their own. You touching the dog rod, you, you putting your finger inside the female dog, all for puppies. That's covetous. You trying to make a buck. You trying to come up off your litter of puppies. That's bestiality. God said the fearful, the unbelieving, the whoremongers, the idolaters, and the abominable. That's an abomination for you to be touching the animal. Read. And murderers and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have that part in the lake which burneth which with fire and brimstone. If you do not repent of this, you will get the lake of fire. Watch that class, keys to hell and death. That's going to be your fate if you don't stop this behavior. From there, get Job 30 and 1. Job chapter 30 and verse 1. The book of Job chapter 30 and verse 1. But now, they that are younger than I have me in derision, uh -huh. whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. Who is that talking about? The so-called white man, Esau. They have that reputation. Job said, I wouldn't want these people sitting with my dog. Why? Because this what they do. See what they do with animals. But now what do you see? You see our people what? Envy and they oppressor following in the same behavior. That's where we learned a lot of this wickedness from. We learned it from these heathens. That's why God would always tell us, separate from these nations. Don't follow their ways. 
What you saw right there with that dog breeding, that's their ways. You going to masturbate the dog, touch the other dog. Come on, man. That's bestiality that you involved in. From there, get Psalms 106, verse 35. We learn this stuff from these heathens. A lot of this stuff that we do in this place that we in today, Babylon the Great, we learned it from the heathens. We envied our oppressor. Even gang banging. Brothers try to claim that so hard. You learn that from the heathens. This defiling yourself with these animals, you learned it from these heathens. That's why we ain't supposed to be amongst them. Read that when you got it. The book of Psalms, chapter 106 and verse 35. Uh-huh. But we're mingled among the heathen and learned their works. What happened? But we're mingled among the heathen. So we mingled ourselves among these heathens. So not only was we sleeping with these heathens, these other races, we was learning their gods, and we learned their works. We learned wicked rituals that they partake in, bad behaviors, inordinate affections that they involve themselves in. We learn all of that. Read. But they were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. And we learned their works. Oh, the white man do that? Oh, we, we should do it too. It's co it looks cool. It looks extravagant. Now, look at us. It's no way in hell that we should be comfortable seeing something like that. That's unnatural. But what happened? We mingled ourselves among these heathen and learned their ways. From there, get Revelation 18 and 4. What does the Bible tell us? Because I quoted it already. What does the Bible tell us? The book of Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. Uh-huh. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, uh -huh. and that ye receive not of her plagues. God is telling us, separate from these nations. Not no flea doctrine. He's telling us don't follow the ways of these nations. Don't learn their culture, their customs. Don't follow their bad behavior, their wicked and vile behavior. Don't follow that or you will suffer their fate. The same fate that's written for the heathens, you will suffer it. Get uh, Sirach 37, 27. Sirach chapter 37 and verse 27. The book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 27. So if you in the midst of bestiality, examine yourself and repent. Read. My son, prove thy soul in thy life. Uh-huh. And see what is evil for it. You got to examine your own self and know what's evil for you. The next thing that bother the other brother or another sister, it might not bother you, but you know what your shortcomings is. And you supposed to avoid it at all costs. Read. And give not that into it. And give not your soul unto that thing. Why? You're going to shame yourself, brother. You're going to shame yourself, sister. From there, get Jude 19. You must reframe yourself from these wicked spirits. Or they will overtake you and bring you to your ruin. That's what's going to happen. Jude 19. The book of Jude, verse 19. Uh-huh. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. So when you separate yourself, you setting yourself up for failure. We got all these different days. We opening up the school, not just on the feast. You know, brother or sister, that if you alone, you're going to end up on them porn sites, watching videos with animals, because that's what we're talking about tonight. You know that that's where you're going to end up at, so you need to surround yourself with people. Find some business. Stay busy. Don't be alone. Or what? You're going to entertain that demon. From there, get 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. We must examine ourselves. What is your trigger? What is your shortcoming? Once you find out that weakness, you must strengthen yourself in that area. Read. The book, the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 13 and verse 5. Uh-huh. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. We all must examine ourselves. Read. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, 
except ye be reprobate. So you must examine where you fall short and start to strengthen yourself there. Don't give yourself a long time. Don't put yourself in a position where you will fall from there. Get Luke 13 and 3. Because what will happen if you do not repent from this spirit? If you do not leave this spirit alone, what will happen? Luke 13 and 3. The book of Luke chapter 13 and verse 3. Uh -huh. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. If you don't repent of not only this spirit, whatever you battling it, you will perish. We must change our minds or we will perish here in this place. From there, 2 Ezra 15, 24. Because this is what you got to understand. You don't repent. This is what you must understand. You say to hell with this class that's coming out and you continue in that spirit. This is your fate. Read. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 15 and verse 24. Uh-huh. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. It said, woe to them that sin, destruction to them that sin. Everybody battling something. But we talking about those who willfully keep going into the sin won't change. Destruction is unto you. You refuse to change. Destruction is unto you. Destruction is coming for you. From there, get Psalms 106 and 39. We almost done. Psalms 106 and verse 39. The book of Psalms, chapter 106 and verse 39. Read. Thus were they defiled with their own works. This is what you got to understand. It ain't God. You can't blame God. You can't blame Christ. What did the Bible just say? Thus were they defiled with their own works. You defile your own self with your own actions. Nobody tell you to separate yourself, dip off somewhere in a corner or in an attic somewhere and watch those vile movies you watching. Those vile videos, magazines, whatever you looking at. Nobody tells you to do that. You do that. You entertain that. You defile your own self. Read on. And went a whoring with their own inventions. You go a whoring with your own inventions. God ain't put that in you. That's already in you. But you don't fight against it. You entertain it. And if you keep entertaining, it's going to become your actions. Get 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. So, solutions. What do you have to do? What can you do? Here's some solutions for you. Don't separate yourself. Because that bestiality spirit is starved from porn because you're watching stuff and it leads you to these vile videos. So don't separate yourself. Don't give yourself no excuse to be alone if you ain't got to. Read that. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17. Uh-huh. Pray without ceasing. So if you battle this spirit, brothers, or sisters, because we've seen it's women that deal with this. If you battle this spirit, you must increase your prayer life. Increase your prayer life. Ask the Lord to strengthen you to overcome that spirit. Or what? If you don't, you will be overcome by it. So pray to the most high to help you overcome that thing. Read. That's pray. it on that? Yes, sir. Read it one more time. Pray without ceasing. That means don't stop praying. Leadership just put it out. Pray three times a day. Matthew 17, 21. Y'all, throughout this series, you're going you gonna to hear this scripture keep coming because fasting shows you if you can discipline yourself, if you can deny yourself what your body needs, you can deny sin. That's what fasting shows you. It's power in fasting. That's why our forefathers did it. Our forefathers and our foremothers. Read that. The book of Matthew chapter 17 and verse 21. Read. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fast. How do some demons go out? Goeth out, but by prayer and fasting. You got to combine both of them. Pray and fast, and you will dry that demon out of you. Some demons, hey, that's your thorn. You got to battle that thing till Christ come or till you die. But the more you fast, the more you pray, you'll overcome that thing and learn.
to overpower it when it comes, when you get tempted. That's what that fasting and praying together is going to do for you, brothers and sisters. Understand that. And then, depending on what you deal with, one day fast ain't going to cut it. You might got to up your days of fasting. You might got to hit you a two-day. Sometimes you might have to hit you a three. You might have to bust out the big guns and hit you a four-day. It might get like that. You got to do whatever is needed so you don't fall to that sin. From there, last scripture. Acts 17 and verse 11. So you need to increase your prayer if you deal with this. You need to increase your fasting if you deal with this. Acts 17 and 11. The book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 11. Read. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Uh-huh. And that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Uh-huh. And searched the scriptures daily. What did they do in Thessalonica? And searched the scriptures daily. In Thessalonica, they searched the scriptures daily. They searched the Bible daily. It say they received the word with all readiness of mind. And they searched the scriptures daily. Daily, you need to search the scriptures on what you battle with. Yes, you need to know prophecy, history, understanding, but you better focus on what you deal with. That's the most important thing that you need to study. So with that, again, today's class was Foul and Unclean Spirits Part 2, Bestiality. We pray that this helps you. We pray that this strengthens you helps you overcome this demon. Do not give in. Remember, like we always say, never give up, never give in. I'm Officer Asa, IUIC Chicago. That's going to conclude today's class. Most high Christ bless.